London has fallen, and apparently Gerard Butler is the only person who can save the day. Don't ask me why. Hello once again watchers of Good Movies, my name is Nick Pell and this is once again coming from my apartment. Now today, we are going to be talking about the sequel to Olympus Has Fallen, London Has Fallen. As I said, this is the sequel to the 2013 film Olympus Has Fallen, it has the same cast for the most part, and uh, instead of just the White House being attacked, we have a whole city this time. So it should be a bigger deal, right? In regards to the action scenes, Gerard Butler is fantastic. These are the scenes which he is just he's made to do because these are the scenes which made his career with 300 which is a very action heavy film that showed oh hey this is where your strong suit is so when he is on his own taking out guys doing these fancy awesome moves that he apparently is the only person who can do in this film he is awesome because those are the funnest scenes to watch because you just get to see him be a badass and take down these guys who are trying to kill the president and it's just it looks awesome everything else is kind of just it's, it's kind of iffy. Even the scenes where he is with the president, um, Aaron Eckhart plays the president again. Those scenes just, eh, we, I get that they wanted to try to create more chemistry and more of a relationship between Gerard Butler and the president instead of just having him locked away in a room again and Gerard Butler having to go and try to rescue him. I would have actually preferred them to be, kind of do a rinse and repeat formula with this film. Have the president get taken very quickly and have Gerard Butler have to go and take him and rescue him. That would have probably worked a lot better than whatever else this movie was. The main thing that I really enjoyed with Olympus Has Fallen was the destruction of the White House and just seeing how they took the White House. It was just a very interesting and cool scene to watch. Very similar with London Has Fallen. Just seeing them attack London, just explosions and taking out bridges and taking out all these world leaders just instantaneously. It's very fluid, it's very strategic, and it looked really, really neat. Those were the scenes which had me on the edge of my seat because it's just seeing this massive destruction play out in front of you. It's just something which you don't see every day, and it looked very realistic. Some of the CGI was kind of evident, I thought, especially the fire for some reason. It really caught my eye just when I was noticing the effects of it. It didn't seem as realistic as I thought it could have. So besides the destruction and the action scenes, the rest of the film isn't really that special. It starts off very, very slow. We basically have to show that Gerard Butler, oh, he's moved on a little bit, and he is considering resigning from the Secret Service, which he tried to get back into after being kicked out in the last film. And so he's got a family coming up now and all this stuff, I and mean, it's, I don't know, it's used to humanize him or something. And I didn't really care that much about it, I just wanted to see him get to London so the, the shit could start hitting the fan. And the villain for the film isn't really that interesting. The introduction for the film kind of introduces him as a person, but I, I didn't really care about his motivations. Like, there are side motivations which, in retrospect, kind of make a little bit of sense as to why he's so pissed off at the West, but... I didn't really care. He wasn't that appealing of a character to me. And so and he either had any screen time either. He just has these video conferences with the White House and maybe has five minutes of screen time, if that. So I didn't really care about the villain whatsoever in this film. The stakes also felt a lot smaller in this film, even though this should have been a lot larger because London, once it's attacked, very little else actually happens to kind of escalate a conflict. With Olympus Has Fallen, we have the White House get taken. We have this very small contained situation in which the stakes seem very, very high. And by the end of the film, we have the U.S. in the in the possibility of nuclear destruction. This film, I think it would have worked a lot better if like other cities had been getting attacked. It's like, oh, hey, you're not giving us the president. We're going to escalate this conflict and expand the destruction. It would have made up the stakes a lot higher. It's like, oh, hey, is one person worth all these lives which are being taken? That would have worked out really, really well. This, it, the stakes just didn't seem that high. I didn't really care. It's kind of a given as just, just to how this film is going to play out. And the trailer itself for this film just simply showed too much because just having gone to a lot of films over the last couple months, I've seen this trailer quite a lot. So I just kind of knew, oh, hey, this has to happen. This has to play out. This, these events have to happen at some point in the movie. And 
yeah, it just kind of ruined it for me a little bit. So guys, London Has Fallen is not nearly as good as its predecessor Olympus Has Fallen. It's got some good destruction scenes and it's got really good action scenes with Gerard Butler is on his own kicking ass. But otherwise, it's really not that entertaining of a film. It's it's fine for what it is in its very simple premise, but I'm, I'm probably not going to remember it very soon after watching it. So, so guys, those are my thoughts on London Has Fallen. Did you like the film as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair comment, and subscribe once again. If you so choose, I appreciate it immensely. And as always, American people, my name is Nick Pell. And once again, keep on watching.